very special to face to face with the one and only Brett the Hitman Hart. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome back to Windsor. Yeah, Windsor's a, a very uh, interesting city. And you were here doing a show uh, here at the new sportsplex at the St. Clair College. It must have been, uh, you, did you like the house? Did you, how was it, it last a, it night? It was a beautiful, it was kind of an old, old time night and a beautiful new facility. It was uh, actually really nice, so kind of the old time wrestling crowd. Yeah. The old time size of a wrestling crowd and, you know, all the wrestlers, I know in the back were like, you know, out there to really bust their tails and give the best matches they could. And it was just, yeah. it was it had a nice vibe about the whole night. And we're here close to the workout room in case you want to do a few reps before you leave. Well, <laughs> in a perfect world. In a perfect world. You know, growing up as uh, your mom and dad and, and raising, you know, you being one of all those kids, um, you know, in, uh, in Calgary, uh, in Alberta, uh, you ever feel that basically you had no choice, that you had to go into wrestling? I think it was a... I think it was a calling from the time I was younger, like real small, that it was probably always going to be there and always going to be the back, you know, something to fall back on. Um, I never knew in my imagining, you know, that it would ever get as big as it did and that I would become the champion that I was and all that. But uh, I sure, um, sure like how it went. You know, when you look at your dad and he was known so well as as being, you know, Order of Canada he got and all the things and being with the community and charities and all the things your dad did for wrestling and, and you know, bringing up so many wrestlers. Um, tell us about your mom. And sometimes, you know, your mom didn't, my, doesn't, really didn't have the limelight. My mom was the key to the whole thing. She's the backbone of the whole family. Everything pivoted around my mom. My mom was always behind the scenes doing everything from, you know, handling whatever the kids were doing at school from appointments to dentists or packing their lunches and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. She was in charge of everything. My dad was her her worker. Yeah. He did everything. But she well, was who really controlled it? I mean, really, the brains of the operation must have been your mom. <laughs> Would you ever from, say from, that? From, no, well, she was the brains in the business sense, like, but, sure? uh, you know, the taxes and the filings and all the, everything that comes with running a business. But my dad was the you know, the genius behind his wrestling business itself. Sure. But in Patterson uh, Heights, the your neighborhood there in outside of Calgary, and growing up in that is 5,000 square foot home, and having the basement, as we've heard about, is called the dungeon, and all the things that, that you were a part of in growing up there. Uh, think back to the legacy of what that means in the wrestling world, how a house has just become the heart house now. Well, it... You know, it was a house that had a lot of history before the Hart family moved in it. It was a World War One hospital, you know, and I've got a gorgeous picture at home of all the... I think it was taken about 1915 with all these young 15, 16-year-old um, soldiers getting ready to go off to World War One, right. all sitting on the balcony of the house on both both uh, the top and the bottom of the house. And it's just a great shot. But there's a lot of history there. I never saw that picture until many, just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I was, but it really would have inspired me as a kid. I, to me, the house was always like a castle or a fort, or you know, it was great to play. And people in. still go by it, and they're referred to as the Hart House, even though your family doesn't have it anymore. I got stopped by the Canadian customs guys about a year or two ago. One of them was telling me he said the number one attraction in Alberta, for, as far as tourists flying in, at least in Alberta, because it's your dad's house. They fly in, they just want to take a picture, stand out in front, and it's. I guess it becomes such a problem that the people that are li actually living there now <laughs> have uh, on the door. become kind of rude and they don't let anybody on the property <laughs> or you know, they've had enough. You know. Well, a lot of acres too. It was yeah. a, big, a big facility. So in the basement, the dungeon, I mean, talk about that. When you were a kid and hearing all the noises and, and all the stuff of the business of uh, the moves and that kind of thing, uh, exciting, scary as a child, I mean... Um, no, I you think it was, was always... Going, you ever want to go down there was, and help? You hear a lot of grunting and stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, it was, they talk about the dungeon. The, right. It wasn't like that all the time. A lot of, most of the time, my dad was down there actually trying to teach guys wrestling. You know? mm -hmm. And they had a lot of uh, young guys that were trying to learn it. And uh, it was a kind of a, almost like a clinic. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you knew my dad, and a lot of guys, they, they, they joke about how, you know, he would always end up stretching you and stuff like that. But... He, he wasn't so much trying to hurt anybody as he was really trying to teach you everything. He even just had the submission wrestling you see in UFC. He was just like one of those guys. He, 
he was obsessed with trying to pass it on, teach you how to, to take these same skills and you can be the toughest guy in your, your neighborhood or something. Right. Like he, it was always a chance to upgrade your, your whole uh, personality. Everyone who'd been down to the dungeon and trained with Stu Hart, I got to ask you, who was number one? I was in a family member. Who came out of there that you were the most proud of as a family? Well, I, I got to think Neidhart probably because he was the one, he was really one of the only guys or one of the few guys that can say they really got taught by my dad in the dungeon. You know, there's a lot of guys that were in the basement wrestling or they, you know, the, like Jericho and different guys talk about the dungeon, but yeah. they're not really the, the guys that came out of the dungeon. Sure. Neidhart, he, he, my dad picked him out of thin air and taught him wrestling and hired him, booked him, taught him everything he knows. And good enough that he was good enough to marry your sister. <laughs> yeah, that's where we were. That's Tell us where. about your four kids. What are they up to? How are they doing? They're all doing good. They're all uh, getting older now. Uh, two of my boys are sort of in the oil patch, working up, one's working up north and the other's um, <clears throat> doing the same kind of thing. And my my, my daughters, uh, I got two two daughters, and yeah. uh, I got a little granddaughter with one of them. That's, oh, good. That's about four and a half years old. And, I saw a uh, picture of you playing foosball with them the other day. Well, I, I think uh, I'm not sure if it was foosball or uh, maybe it was table, table hockey. Table hockey. That's yeah. what I meant. Sorry, I don't say foosball in Canada. I apologize. Foosball. I'm not. I, couldn't play it very well, but table hockey, I'm pretty good. Yeah, you're good at that. So I want to talk to you about, uh, you know, the sharpshooter. Everyone's got to ask, how did you come up with, how did it become your signature move? Um, it became my move um, basically when they asked me to come up with a submission for a finishing move. And um, I just, they, I just went for a long walk in the building thinking about I was like, here they are going to give me some kind of big opportunity and I got to come up with this move. Mm -hmm. And um, somehow it was like I said, you know, nobody's really done the scorpion deathlock, the thing that the sting does. And I'd seen it done in Japan and had it put on me many times, but I never, never really thought about it. And I, I said, I, I think I could do that. And they, they said, that sounds, they liked the idea. And then I had to go figure out how to put it on. And uh, I really didn't know. So who did you try it on? First I went in, the, went in the dressing room and I said, does anybody know how to put that scorpion <laughs> deathlock on? And, uh, you know, oddly enough, it was Conan the barbarian, or Conan the Mexican guy that, uh, he goes, I know. And he showed me in the shower and it took a couple of minutes and it was like, and then I figured it out. And in doing that, I actually went in a ring and in the, in the haste of learning it and showing it, I ended up doing it backwards. Wow. And put on a little different. And if you ever watch me, my mine is, is not the, Sting's move, it's different. Correct. And Owen, Owen's was different, and my, mine was, I always go to the left, and it's always just a little right. different. So it, it's my own move. You know, one of the things too that uh, when you're doing, so how did you come up with wearing the pink, the glasses, and the look of your character that we've known so, so often? Well, it all just came from, uh, you know, just uh, kind of one thing added onto another. Mm -hmm. You know, originally we'd, we didn't have anything. We just didn't have even, uh, you know, we didn't even have a name, we, or I didn't have the moniker or Hitman yet. You know, right. We all went, Anvil was Anvil then, but, and Jimmy Hart was his manager, and we came up with Hart Foundation. We come up with, the sunglasses actually came out of me being kind of nervous in front of the camera. Not really? Not, not knowing, not, not when people see it, see it in my eyes at the time. Wow. And so I wore the sunglasses, and it gave me kind of a, a, a mask to pretend and I was confident. And you were, you were 93,000 people at the Pontiac Silverdome for WrestleMania three, you're one of the one of the big bouts there. You're a six man tag team, and that and they had to drive you. I think they took all the wrestlers out in golf carts. It yeah. was so far. I mean, to be a part of that. I mean, you look back on on events like that, you probably just still shake your head, thinking, "What a night for for the state of wrestling in, in there was a lot North of, America." A lot of really big nights. That was certainly one of the biggest. It was so big. Um, and you know, the, as I remember, unfortunately, I got poked in the eye in my yeah, match. That's right. You were teared up to the I whole thing. Up, I couldn't, and for the next month, I couldn't see hardly anything out of my eye. And yeah. uh, it was kind of a, the match itself was kind of a blur to, to say the least. Yeah. And uh, I really took a good thumb to the eye. The other thing is we want to talk about with you is um, your music. 
you know, they got into announcing every every person that came out had their own music and and that kind of thing. How did that come up? Did you have any say in that, or was that the business? No, of that, was, that was Jimmy Hart that came up with that music, and he came up with that music after we had split up. It was for me and Jim, mm -hmm. and he actually wrote that whole thing and. You know the guitar and everything. Yeah, the guitar riffs is one of the. It was always a very uh, inspiring kind of wrestling theme song. I always thought it was one of the best. 